Hey everybody, welcome back to Forest Firearms. I'm Thomas, and today I am going to do a little comparison between a modern CZ-75 BD police and this old vintage CZ-27 uh, Nazi-marked piece of history here. Uh, both guns are great guns, in my opinion, from completely different eras. Uh, now, one thing to note, the CZ-75 inherently has the advantage of double-stack 16-round mags in 9mm versus single-stack eight round mags in 32 ACP. So what I did is I went ahead and downloaded the nine millimeters magazines to eight rounds a piece, uh, just for comparative purposes in the video. I'm also gonna be showing you guys how to field strip each of these guns, it's very simple. But let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this old gal. Uh, again, this is just one of the most beautiful guns in my collection and the only gun that I presently own that was used by the Axis powers. Uh, check under German occupation. So let's go ahead and get this going. Ooh. Alrighty, so I had a couple of misses and I had an extra round in there. I don't know if I overstuffed the mag or if I miscounted my shots, but we'll just go ahead and power through that. Put this mag back in the this round back in the box here, and let's pull out the CZ75 here. Again, I've got it downloaded to eight rounds. It does hold 16. Um, yeah, this this gun. I've not done a lot of videos with this this firearm here. It has no safety, so that is something you got to be mindful of. It has a decocker. I'm gonna go ahead and take the first shot decocked, as I just showed you. Um, also, this has an advantage over a couple of the other CZ75 models, as it has a uh, round in the chamber indicator here and the front and rear here are checkered that is not so on your standard cz-75 or cz-75b but uh, just a couple of advantages for police use as i said this is the police model of this gun uh, at least at one point maybe even today the most used pistol among police around the world not in the u.s specifically but let's go ahead and give this guy a couple shots Alrighty, so this guy definitely hits more on center than the CZ-27 does, but an enormous amount more recoil. Uh, it is a little bit bigger of a bullet. I don't know how much hotter the load is between the two. That's something I have not checked. So uh, just take that with a grain of salt. And now let's go ahead and show the field stripping for each of these guns. Uh, we'll start with the vintage guy here. So you have to have, first off, a magazine in the chamber for this to lock open. It locks on the back of the magazine here. So let's get that in. You lock it open and there's a button and a tab here. So you're gonna hold this button in, pull down on the tab and pull out. Then get a good grip on the top of the gun, pull out your magazine. It's a little tough because the springs are all working against you here, but after that it gets really easy because you just slide it right off. If you just let go though, the end will fly off the gun one end or the other because this spring right here is just pushing this off and once you have the pin out, there's nothing holding the gun together. So then you've just got your uh, guide rod and spring here. And this little guy here just more or less holds the guide rod and spring, spring in place. It sits on these grooves as you can see. Then to get the barrel out, you're gonna go to this notch right here. You rotate and then pull. But I did actually forget a step. There is this, this little guy here. You turn it until it fits in the grooves and you pull that out. Then you do what I said with the barrel and voila, gun has been field stripped. Uh, you can, if you're doing cleaning, just clean most of the major contact surfaces. Um, Putting it back together is essentially the same thing in reverse. It's not very hard to do. So this guy, you go in these oriented upward, go until you get to that groove again, rotate it back around, push it the rest of the way in. Take this guy, there's some notches that it fits into about there. Turn it back around. Guide rod and spring go through this into the notch there. 
You've got to make sure you guide the spring and rod so that it all fits through. And take the body of the gun here. I've actually got this on wrong. There we go. And just line it up, slide it on, pull back until you can see through here. There is actually a notch, I believe. I might be mistaken. There might not be a notch visible on this, but you go ahead and you thread this guy through. And there you go, the gun is back together. You can't pull the trigger on this gun, actually, without a magazine in, even an empty magazine. So I'm just gonna drop the hammer carefully here. And there we go. So that's how you field strip a CZ-27. Now for the 75, I'm gonna carefully set this guy over here. CZ-75, you do not need mag in the gun. There's hashtag here, this straight. You line that up. You push here, little button there, pull this out, and it slides off. So the mechanisms for disassembling the two guns are actually fairly similar. You get in here and you just pull out your guide rod and spring. Uh, I believe I need to clean this, unless the guide rod is fused to the spring somehow, but uh, it looks like it may be a little gummed up. And then the barrel on this just picks up and floats out again. You got notches that fit in the grooves in here. And again, reassembly, simple as can be. You just put this back in place, take your spring, put it back in. It sets against here. One thing you gotta be careful of, there is a moving part in here that can foul up this guy right here. I've, I've had it hang up on this before. I uh, just gotta be mindful of that. The rails on a CZ-75 actually fit inside the gun rather than outside. So you gotta line these guys up, put it on, go back until you hit that notch, take your, your little guy here, and just push it back in. But you have to have that lined up or it will not stay. And again, there we go. So that's your field stripping for both guns. And I've got two more eight round mags loaded for each gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those again. I'm gonna just stick with the CZ-75 here for a moment. So this gun, for a 9mm, in my opinion, this thing shoots like a dream. It, this particular model is a double action trigger, so there's a little bit of sponge between the brake and the gun actually firing, but it is minuscule and about as easy to control as any that I have ever shot. I have not fired a 9mm that I prefer over the CZ-75, personally. Uh, again, just to put your slide back, you simply pull down on this lever here. So let's go ahead and bring the CZ-27 back out for a moment. Now this guy, as I've showed you, the slide does lock open on an empty mag, but as soon as you pull the mag out, the slide goes back forward. So you gotta be mindful of that. There's no dropping the slide, there's no lever to do that. You just put this back in, cock it again, and you're ready to fire. This gun, do, gun does have a safety, but the safety only works on this if I hold it down. I'm guessing that there's a piece of metal that wore out inside, but to disengage the safety, you just push that. So, back in the same position here. All right, missed one. Again, this gun, uh, it, it kind of jumps in your hand a little, but the recoil is abysmal. Um, I'm not as familiar with the sights on this. It doesn't seem like it hits dead center. I believe you may have to aim a little low and to the right, but a lot of that is just knowing your specific gun. So, something I have to work on with this guy. Uh, I'm more than proficient with the CZ-75. I've owned that gun the longest of any of my firearms, and I love them both, but if I was in a combat situation, I would absolutely prefer having the CZ-75 for a number of reasons. One, the controls are more refined. You got a, first off, fairly cheap bullet. Nine millimeter is extremely cheap and easy to come by, but again, not the most powerful bullet in the world. I would personally prefer using a larger bullet like 45 for a defense situation, but nine millimeter will do it and you got high capacity. Again, like I said, the controls are more refined. 
but for its time, the CZ-27 was an excellent firearm. And for collectors, it's, in my opinion, a must have if you're looking at German occupation weapons. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you later. This is Forest Firearms.